All right, welcome once again, right? Um, today, we still on supply and demand, like I said before. We're going to be attacking supply and demand for probably a few days, right? Because there's a lot of little details and it's, it's a very um, time-consuming topic and it's also probably the most important, one of the most important um, topics and um, strategies you're going to learn and one of the most important confluences you're going to learn as well, right? So I'm just making this a little bigger. Okay, so um, what are we doing? GBPCHF, remove all drawing tools, weekly chat. So, the topic for today is um, uh, basin candles, right? Basically, basin candles. Identifying basin candles and identifying the base correctly is very important when it comes to identifying supply and demand zones because there are going to be correct zones and there are going to be zones that are hard to um, identify, right? So um, to, to get good at this, you just have to know the rules to follow and basically practice them, right? So let's let's go over what is a um, supply and demand zone. Supply and demand zone, right? You know it have um, four different types of uh, zone, right? You have the rally base rally, right? Here's where you would find your basin candles, also your um, supply and demand zone. You have your drop base drop right here is where you would find your supply and demand zone also known as the cp zones the continuation patterns right essentially how you want to trade this is when the market retests the zone you would go short right right and when the market retests this zone you would go long right and then we have um, rally base drop. This is where your basin candle will be at, the supply zone. And then you have your drop base rally, right? And um, this is where you would find your demand zone at, right? On the basin candles there. Now here are the rules for basin candles, right? One, a base can own a base you can have a base on every time frame right but for your particular time frame the base cannot be made up of more than six candles right so let's just write no more than six candles right no more than six candles if it has more than six candles that means um there's too much um consolidation going on in the area there's too much in the area right and it's just not going to make a valid zone right basin candles are made up of candles less than 50 percent so we would say less than 50 percent candles right but not all the time you would find a base with less than 50 percent candle right it's just that less than 50% simply means that the market was consolidating at that price. It simply means that the market was balanced at that price. So we could consider it a base, right? So, and then um, you could also have single candles as base, right? And then for certain types of candles, you, you would draw the base differently, right? So um, there are more rules, but we're going to go through the, the candles just to, to practice identifying the basin candles, right? So we're on the weekly um, chat. We're just identifying what's a basin candle, 
right? So this would be considered a basin candle because it's less than 50%. The body, the body is less than 50% of the entire candle. This would be a basin candle. This would be a basin candle. This would be a basin candle. As long as the body is less than 50%, as long as the candle's wick takes up more than 50%, it's a basin candle, right? Now, you would typically find these kind of wickyish basin candles. Um, generally, some, sometimes you'd find them at the valleys and peaks, but majority of the times they would be at the CP zones, right? Now, this zone right here does not have a basin candle, right? However, it is still considered a base. For valleys and peaks, um, they, they don't necessarily need basin candles, right? But they are still considered a base, right? So um, this would be considered a base, right? This, this would be considered a base, even though it's not um, a basin candle, right? And then we have these, the, all three of these candles here are basin candles, right? Because again, the body has to be um, less than 50% um, percent of the entire week, right? So throughout the chart, you would see lots of basin candles, right? You would see lots of bases. And just being able to identify the bases, you have to train your eyes to do that, right? But then there are other rules and other, other things you need to take into consideration to validate that zone, which we would learn um, at later classes, right? So um, I think we have a, a good idea of what is a basin candle. Mm, let me see something. Yeah, so we have a pretty idea what what is a basin candle, right? So let me just drop this this image, this image right here. So this is a supply. This is this is a diagram of a supply and demand zone, so a rally base drop, right? So this is this is how it's made up. You have the rally, the base, and the drop, right? You have what you call your proximal line, and then what you have what you call your distal line, right? So how the zone is drawn, whenever you have a supply zone, whenever you have a rally base drop, the zone starts from the bottom of the body of the basin candle, and then it ends at the, the highest point, at the wick, of that um, rally base rally, the wick of that peak and the wick of that basin candle, right? <laughs> so here you would see they drew the, um, the proximal line at the body, not at the wick. However, there are some zones where you would draw it at the wick, right? But the general rule, you draw it um, at the body and then your distal line is at the wick, right? This is where the zone ends. Let's see if they have any um, other examples here. Yeah, so let me let me hop back. Let me actually hop back on the chat. Right, so let's say we use um, let's 
It's my toolkit, you know. I'll show you guys how to make one, right? So let's say we're using um, this zone here as a base, right? So we know that the base starts from the body of the basin candle, right? The proximal line starts from the body of the basin candle up to the wick of the basin candle. And that's your zone, right? That's your supply zone right there. Generally, you would enter a few pips before the zone because a lot of the times the market may not actually touch the zone. But just to make sure you get that entry, you enter a few pips below before the zone and your stop loss would be above the zone, a few pips above. And then your target would be down to the next um, zone, right? That would be your target, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Anyways, so here we have a reaction of that on um, the zone right there. This was a valid zone. We have a reaction on a weekly time frame, right? So here is another example. You have your basin candle. The market came up, made a peak, it dropped. Yes, it had, a, it, had a, it had a long wick. But it tends to have long wicks when it reacts off of other zones. So because the market came up and tapped this zone, had, it probably had a daily zone within this weekly zone. We had this, 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 this drop, right? But in this scenario right here, this, this rally base drop, you look for the basin candles, right? So... These two candles right here are the basin candles. This red candle was the move away. It was the impulse away, right? It's not the basin candle. So you want to draw your zone from the basin candles, right? So your um, proximal line would be at the, 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 the end of the body, the bottom of the body, of the basin candle you have two this one okay so here's our rule right let's let's get this rule down early you draw you generally draw your um your zone from the last basin candle before the impulse away before the move away this candle here is the move away this candle here is the basin candle however right if, and pay attention to this rule, if this entire um, candle body, I mean this entire candle, the candle starts from here all the way to the top. If this entire candle, right, engulfs the entire body of the candles next to it, then those candles would be added to the base as a basin candle, right? Let me say that again. If this entire candle body, I mean this entire candle, engulfs the body, right? This is the body right here of the candle next to it. So the, 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 low, the lowest point and the highest point covers the entire body of the candle next to it. Then you would add the, the candle next to it to the base, right? So yes, they're both basing candles. And... Um, this the first basin candle and goes the second one right so we we're going to add the second one in as the base right so we draw the line from the the, the, the bottom of the body of the um the base and then our that's our proximal line that's our entry line right and then our distal line the line that says okay um the zone is completely used up goes to the, the highest point to the top, right? So this would be a zone right here, right? That would be a zone for that basin candle, right? 
So we know, okay, this is our rally base drop. This zone is our rally base drop. This zone right here is a drop base drop, right? But on a lower time frame, it's probably gonna look like a drop um, and then a rally base drop, right? Because it kind of looks like a pullback. But on the weekly time frame, we're, we're just gonna consider it um, a CP zone. We're just gonna consider it um, consolidation because the market kind of just moves sideways, right? If we check it out, it just moves sideways. So how would we draw our zone here now? So this was the area the market consolidated in, right? We have a few basin candles. This was um, this was the move away, right? This candle was the move away. This candle was the impulse away. This candle was the candle that broke out of that zone, right? So that's the move away, which we will get into at a later date. So like I said before, not all zones have these and candles. So the candle next to the, to, the, to the move away would probably be the basin candle, right? But this candle does not look, does not, um, my check. Yeah, um, Rich, say you lost audio, but the audio is still on. Okay, if, if you can hear me, um, say something, uh, type a message. Yeah, from here and here. You can hear me, right? Yeah, clearly. Maybe a... Right, so um, as I was saying, so in this scenario, sometimes you have to use your discretion, right? The base would be the, 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 the base of the, the supply zone would be drawn like this, right? Um, the proximal line at the, the lowest point of the body and the distal line at the highest the highest point of the wick, right? So that would be your um your base here, right? So when it comes to the um rally base rallies and drop base rally, the the, the valleys and the peaks, right? You want it to, to take the um the candle at the very extreme, right? Basically, you want to take the last candle just to just to make sure the zone is valid, right? The safe that would be like the your safest your safest entry. So here, for example, we have a base right here, right? This 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 these three candles are a base. They might look like they're just you know going up slowly. But they are basin candles, right? And like I said before, basin candles are generally found at CP zones, continuation pattern zones, right? So um, you see how we had the, the market base here and then we had an impulse away, right? And then you see the market came back and it retested the zone and went long. So this, 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 this area here is an example of a um, CP zone, right? So be drawn from the, the, the body of the um the basin candle to the lowest um point, right? Now remember what I said before. If the last basin candle, the entire candle engulfs the bodies of the candle next to it, you include those candles in the base, right? So this entire candle engulfed these last two candles' bodies, right? From high to the low was 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 all was these these last two candles are within that 
So we say it's engulfed the um the bodies, right? So your your distal line would go at the, 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 the bottom of the um the base and your proximal line would go at the 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 top of the body, right? If it's a demand zone. And this would be a zone right here, right? Now with this strategy, you can have zone within zones, right? So this was a rally base rally zone. However, the market dropped base and rally, right? So here we actually had a um a zone right here. This was the 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 base, right? And this is the um the end of the base, right? So we would write something like this. Now in order to validate the, you basically have to score these zones, right? So just, just, just a quick tip. The faster a candle move away from the zone or the bigger the candle move away or the, the, the stronger the move away, the stronger the zone, right? Now for, for this zone right here, that's highlighted red, the move away wasn't as strong. You, you basically had basin candles moving away. So that tells you that that zone is not that strong, right? But when you have a strong impulse away, then you know that zone is strong. So for example, this area right here, we had a strong impulse away. We had a full candle away, right? So we expect when the market gets back there, there's a lot of money waiting to be entered, right? The market didn't have no problem shooting down. And the more money, the more money that's at the zone, the stronger the departure is gonna be, right? We call this candle the departure. That's the candle that left the zone, right? So we're just gonna we're just gonna practice identifying the zone, drawing the zones. We're not gonna score the zones, we're not gonna validate the zones, we're just gonna be um, identifying the zones, right? So here we have a whole long line of um basin candles right now when you have a long line of basin candles when you have the market just just kind of dragging going down we don't we don't consider that um we don't consider any of those candles cp candles right we call this compressed supply or compressed demand so generally what happens when the market moves like that in that um sluggish basin candle like Mana, we don't take those zones and generally the market tends to fly through them right the market tends to just eat up all the orders that's at that zone really easily and fly through them like how you see we had two candles here just entirely just flew through these uh, this 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 whole zone here that's what you that's what you would expect from um compressed supply or demand right for 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 a zone to be to be safe for a zone to be considered valid and strong the market has to has to look like this like rally base rally right impulse base impulse right arrival base departure right not rally base in and rally right the base had to be a pause uh, the price have to be balanced and then an imbalance pushes the price away. Now, for this, this the price was not balanced for this. If it, was, if it was balanced, it wouldn't be going down. It would just go sideways. That's it being balanced. And then when the imbalance comes in, because it's the imbalance we're trading, the market just have to depart. The market just have to move away, right? So don't like when when you're looking for zones, don't don't just draw these 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 little basin these little basin zones and consider them zones, right? Because they won't work, right? So and another thing, you may find bases that look like this. It will just be one doji candle, right? You might find a base that's just like this, just one doji candle. 
how you how you draw the um the zone you, you you draw it a little different so when it's just one doji candle you just take the entire candle right so you take it from the bottom of the wick to the top of the wick and that's going to be your um your zone right when it's one doji candle hopefully i can find a, an example when i'm going through the bases right So let's just, um, we're going to start from right here. And we're just going to mark off all the bases, whether they are valid or not. But once it's a base, valley, um, rally base, rally, drop base, rally, um, rally base, drop, drop base, drop, right? So here we have a rally base drop, strong drop. This scenario, because we have like three doji candles, whenever you have like doji candles, it's best to just take the entire zone, right? So our zone will be drawn like this. Proximal line, crystal line, right? We had one reaction, two reactions. Usually they say you can only enter a trade when it approaches a zone once, because that is the best time to enter, the first time. But it might, it, it, the trade might work out if it touches the zone maybe three times. But the most you should, you should take is two touches. If you, if you enter the, on the first touch, great. If you get a second touch, you know it's up to you to enter, right? But generally, the more the market touches the zone, the more the market eats away from the orders at the zone, right? When the market can't even reach the zone, that means there's so much orders there that the market can't even get there, right? So for example, why I say that we enter early sometimes, if you look right here, the market came up and it didn't touch the zone. It came close, that, that happens. Here, the market came in, it came halfway, right? Here, the market came and it ate all of, all of the others and then dropped, right? Now, once the, once the market pushes past the zone, the zone is no longer valid, right? So here the market just ate up half, and then here the zone was um was completely um all the orders was completely filled, and then the market dropped, right? So um let's see, we have rally this drop right here, right? We have rally this. The you know, more I say about these doji candles, right? Rally base drop. We have drop base rally, right? Now there are rules. There are rules to validate these zones. So if you don't see them working in in, in this little practice session, is because I'm not validating them. Like just like how there's conferences to trading. There's confluences to score these zones to decide whether they're worth taking the risk, right? So here we had a rally base drop. So for the basin candle, we had a doji candle. I remember what I said. If the entire candle engulfs the body of the candle next to it, you consider that in the base. So we could draw the base like this, right? Or if you want to take the entire doji candle, like I said, you could take that too. Right? So here we had, okay, drop, base, drop. Right? We're on the weekly time frame. But if you drop down on the daily at four hour, you would see base and candles here because this is a 50% um, a candle, right? So this would be the zone right here. Then we have drop, base, drop. This would be the zone right here. Right? Or you could take the entire doji candle. You can see we had a reaction here also. Then we had drop, um, rally, base drop, right? This would be a zone right here. And then we had some compressed supply coming down. And then we had drop, base, rally. We had rally, rally, base, rally, right? So this is your, um, your, 
entry candle, your basin candle, but remember it engulfs the entire body of the candles next to it. So you, this would be the zone right here, right? Down to the lowest wick. And then here we have rally base drop. So this would be a zone right here. And you could see the market came up with tests and drop, right? Here we have rally base drop. Two reactions. We had drop base rally. Now, whenever you have this this spike in the market, um, you don't want to take that zone because it doesn't make sense because you have to drive to the lowest wick if it's a value RP, and then it will just be too big, right? And you'll just be risking too much. So you just you just there's a lot of zones you're not gonna take, right? So also we had we had um drop base drop rally base rally base rally, right? Rally base drop. We had some consolidation over here. We had a rally base drop, right? So, like I said, this strategy tends to work best on the higher time frame. Now, you might just, just see this, this small little drop, but you know, price is fractal. So you could actually drop down in a few time frames and take, let's say, if you have this um, weekly supply zone, you could go down to the daily supply zone, you could go down to the four hour supply zone, one hour, and, and so on, right? So even though this looks like a short drop, you remember you're on a weekly time frame. So if you measure it, this was a six, five, 600 pip drop. From here to here is a 600 pip drop. So the idea is, okay, you identify a weekly zone, you wait for the market to come up to test the zone. If you drop down a few lower time frames, you might take the four hour of the daily within the weekly zone, or you just wait for some kind of break of structure or reversal because you're expecting the price to react to the weekly zone. So on the lower time frame, you're gonna see that reversal, but you know it's just a weekly supply zone taking control. So you can look for shots, right? And here we had drop base rally, right? So I'm gonna dry it out. Drop base rally, right? And then also we had a rally base drop here. Now we have drop base rally, right? So up here, remember you want to take the most extreme zone. Rally base drop. And then we had drop base rally. So for this 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 base here, the depart the departing candle was not as strong, right? This this candle right here. So you always want your departing candle to be strong, right? That one was not strong. That one was like a basin candle. So it probably would have, you probably would not want to take that zone. But that doesn't mean it's, it's invalid, you know, but the stronger the move away, the more valid the zone is, right? So here we have drop base rally. Here we had a rally base, basin candle, rally. And here we had drop, I mean rally base drop. And then we had a drop base drop right here. And here we had a drop base um, drop rally base rally rally base drop i mean and then we had a drop base drop drop base um rally right now remember this is your this is your basin candle this is your depart this this candle the green candle next to it is your departing candle right so that basin candle engulfed the entire all the candles next to it and engulfed it so we include those in the base. So the distal line will be at the bottom of this week, to the top of um, 
this body because once the the basin candle engulfs the entire body of the candles next to it, you include it in the base, right? But then you have to remember the basin candle rules. It cannot consist of more than six candles. If it, if it has more than six candles, then the zone is not going to be high probability, right? So let's count the basin candles. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, we have six candles. If we had seven, then no, right? So here we have a rally base, um, base drop, drop base, rally base drop, right? Drop base drop. Now here we have um, drop base rally. So this is the basin candle in Gulf one, two, three, four. So this is the entire zone right here. Right, we had a rally base rally, and um, yeah, so as you can see, there's a lot of zones. Now, you have to learn to distinguish which of these zones are going to work, right. And we, we distinguish that by a certain set of rules that we follow. The zone has to ac accomplish certain goals, right? If you read the book, you would know what those goals are, right? You would know what those rules are. So um, we're definitely going to be going over those rules, going over those goals, going over um, more of supply and demand. This was just how to identify the basin candles, right? What are basin candles? What do basin candles look like on the four different supply and demand zones? And how do you draw the zones on the basin candles? You draw your, 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 um, your proximal line. If it's a supply at the body of the basin candle, and your distal line at the top of the highest wick, and that's your zone, right? You enter on the, on the, prox, on the, um, the proximal line, right? So let me just label it for you. Now there's a tool I use to make my zones look um, a little not so messy, right? Now you see it highlighted the zone. It, it drew the zone all the way to the end, right? No matter how far I go. And then it labeled the, um, the, the numbers of the, um, the proximal and the stuff. So um, this would be uh, proximal line. To be a proximal line and um, this would be a distal line, right? This would be a supply zone, right? This would be a rally base drop. That's for um, supply, for demand now. Now this, this, this strategy needs a lot of practice, right? In order to master it, you have to practice this a lot. This would be a proximal line. This would be uh, this uh, line, right? 
that this would be a demand as well, right? So, um, yeah, we're going to stop right here, pick it up later on. But, um, yeah, if you have any questions, drop them on this topic. And let me um, answer them, right? Leave a minute or two for um, questions. It took me months, right, to catch the. To, 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 Romeo asked how long did it take me to catch this. It took me months, right? So I learned supply and demand from many different people, um, till I found someone who actually has it down and consistent, right? When I found out about supply and demand, I was probably in some random group that led me to another group where it had this um, this Arabic. German guy and his 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 trades were like on point. So he was winning 90% of his trades. So so um what I did I uh, asked him what is his strategy to a plan man he, he taught some of it to me and then I did a lot of research on YouTube I did a lot of research I paid for courses right um the book you're reading is from a course that I paid for and yeah it took i took a few months you know but it doesn't have to take you that long because you actually have somebody to to sit down and say okay this is wrong this is right this is how you do this you know give you advice on the mistakes to look out for and actually make sure you do it the right way you know and then also you know everybody has their own way of doing it but um the method that we use is pretty accurate because if you're in the signal room, you see that we catch, you know, big moves because this is like a higher time frame um, swing trader, position trader strategy, you know. But it just takes a lot of practice. And while you're practicing, you're going to see what works and what doesn't. And what, and what works, you just stick to it, right? So, yeah, you just practice over like a couple hundred trades and you'll probably get a good idea of um, how to use the strategy. So yeah, um, thanks for hopping on and um, we'll definitely be back at this this week. You know, so what I would suggest for you to do, hop on your chats and just practice drawing your zones. You know, you can drop your chats in the group chat and myself uh, along with other top students would probably say, you know, you did good or you need to fix this or that, you know. But still, read the book and you'll get it done, right? So um, have a good night. And we'll be back here um, later on this week.